Hey guys, for today's project, I'm gonna go back a little bit to my roots and do an abandoned mental asylum room. This was actually a lot of fun for me to go back and do something that felt very familiar. It felt a lot less stressful to try to, you know, just build out this thing pretty quickly and have some fun with it. I decided to make this one a little different shape than normal. I, I put basically like a little half wall on one side so that I can get a more of an angled perspective with the camera and really play with the light that's going to come through the window. So I just started with the walls and now this is a couch that I actually bought from Hobby Lobby I believe. Just a 1 12th scale dollhouse couch and I'm going to really dirty it up and kind of destroy it to make it look like it's been there rotting for a long time. I use my Dremel like this with just a couple different attachments sometimes. This one is just like a grinder attachment and it really shreds the fabric and makes it look like, you know, it's been torn and stuff over time. Again, this is one way to get started with this hobby. You can just grab something that's already made and then try to make it as realistic and, you know, dirty as you, you want. Here I just used some glue and clamped it down until it dried so the cushion is more lumpy now and doesn't look brand new. I'm really trying to dirty this thing up so I've used some alcohol inks, some pigment powders, a couple different things to really stain it and age it. And this again is another table, I think it came in the same set from Hobby Lobby, just dirtying that up as well, really just making it look like almost monotone because things fade over time and with all that dirt on it, it it'll just blend into the scene. I know I've talked about it before on this channel, but what I think about usually first when I think about a new project is how I'm going to light it for the end shots and where the light is going to come from. And that creates just a dramatic scene in general. And so this room is only going to have this one window. It's going to feel a little bit isolated, I think. And the light is going to stream through illuminating the couch and whatever else is around there. I think I'm going to board up the window a bit too. And so that way there'll be actual shafts of light kind of peeking through. It'll be harder to light in, in some ways because I'll need more light, but it'll be really cool with the fog effects and really sell that abandoned, you know, lonely feeling. And here I'm using tile grout again, and I'm also gonna use some broken up bits of plaster just to make it look like there's a lot of dust and rubble that's fallen from the ceiling and whatever else. I found this is a lot of abandoned buildings. You walk in and it's covered in at least an inch of some kind of rubble and dust. I really like to use this rust paint from Dirty Down. You just paint it on and within like a minute or two it dries to a really cool rust color. It does help sometimes if you add like a texture to a surface first so that it has like more meat to it but this stuff is one of the easiest things to put on and make a really good rusty texture. And so here I'm also putting some glass. I'm using these microscope slide covers, so it's real glass, you have to be careful, but you can break them and, and they look really realistic and to scale. I'm just adding those on just, just to have them. I did this a bit in my Saw movie video where I took these dowels and made rusty pipes out of them. And then here, this is a warning. I tried my Dremel trick on this little pillow and the fabric got stuck and luckily my finger didn't get caught in or anything. So I asked my wife what else I should include in this thing and she came up with this cool idea of using this really vintage record player. I think they used to be called gramophones or phonographs. I found a model on Thingiverse printed it out. Didn't come out perfect, but it's perfect for this because it's going to be broken up anyway. And so I just quickly painted it and I started to weather it with pigment powders. This is a little bit of tile grout to fit in with the rest of the scene. I'm definitely going for more of a minimalist feel in this room. I want it to be kind of empty like many abandoned places, but my wife really thought that record player would be a cool addition and I think she was right. And of course, I usually like to add in a little bit of nature taking back over this space. So I'm using vines again from Diorama Persepe. I'm just going to build up a couple layers of vines and add 
the little leaves to them and stuff. And I'm using super glue and super glue activator to quickly put it in place. So I've had a lot of you ask if I sell my dioramas and for a long time there was a reason why I wasn't selling them and I'll be able to reveal that early next year. But now, starting with this one, I'm going to start selling some of them. If you're interested in buying it, send me an email at the email that I've put in the description and I'll let you know if it's still available. For the boards on the window, I just took some basic balsa wood strips, cut them to, to length and kind of stained them a little bit just started gluing them back there. They're gonna be a detail that is gonna be hard to see, but the light is going to stream through these little cracks and make a really dramatic look. And then this pillow helped to add a little bit of a color pop to the scene. So if you haven't noticed lately, I've been accepting products from companies to try out on the channel because I'm really trying to build out the capabilities of what I can do with this. So I got this really interesting new type of light to try. This is called the B25R from Suray. It's a very interesting, unique light that I honestly haven't tried before. So basically it can bend in either direction and create a really interesting shaped light. You can also connect more than one together. And so you can, you can have this really huge light. It comes battery powered or AC adapter and it's fully RGB. So if I turn on, this is only like 5%, I think. I can scroll through and get different colors. Um, it's been pretty cool to try out. So to try to demonstrate one thing this type of light would be good for, I'm gonna take the projector I got in the last video and try to make a product shot. So I'm using two large lights with large soft boxes and this is what it looks like currently. Now when I take the Suray lights and I put them side by side, it's crazy that even a tiny tweak of positioning changes the look of the product so much. This is one, and then with the lights coming around, it looks skinnier all of a sudden. So softbox, the first one, and then the lights a little around the front. Of course, the inspector loved the 2001 Space Odyssey reference. So to use these lights in this scene with a little bit of a different way of going about it for me, I tried to set one up overhead as a nice soft light and then one outside the window and I did some interesting things with colors just to give it a shot. These are much softer lights than I normally use so I won't get that light beam effect. And then I tried making the outside light red. And this was just using one of the lights from above, just like a nice soft overhead light. And this honestly is a great way to illuminate your miniatures without going too crazy with lighting. Then I brought out the big lights and some fog and got these. So like I said, I'm going to sell this model. So if you're interested, email me at the address in my description and we'll talk about it. I'll let you know down in the description if it's been sold already. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't yet and come back to see my next project. I'll see you then.